Hello friends, uh, this is Raji Gali. I'll start with an example for uh, easy understanding. Uh, let's say a person John has to go to hospital for some treatment. Um, got admitted in the hospital and got some treatment, uh, got some medication, got some uh, lab test done. So after doc doctor confirms that everything is fine with John and John get discharged from the hospital so uh, these different uh, activities uh, took place in the hospital there will be different systems in the hospital you know to manage these different uh, activities um, let's say the patient administration for uh, admits the transfers and the discharges and the billing system and the pharmacy for the medications and the lab for the test <coughs> right so the different systems uh, have to talk to each other about uh, John in some way, right? And if John is, uh, you know, holding the insurance, then this hospital has to talk to a third party system like insurance, uh, right? Uh, so the different systems uh, communicate uh, with each other about the patient John uh, should be in a common, um, you know, standards. So certain standards are created in US and one of the popular standard is HL7. So uh, I would like to give some tips, uh, you know, uh, to easily understand HL7 and uh, begin wo working in the uh, uh, healthcare uh, products uh, which are HL7 compliance. Uh, different systems uh, in the hospital uh, are categorized uh, as different feeds uh, you know like uh, ADT feeds is to manage uh, admissions discharge and the transfer uh, activities and the lab feeds is for the lab test so likewise medication feeds uh, surgery feeds radiology feeds uh, and some other feeds as well and about ADT events, I'm coming back to the same example. Uh, Mr. John, as a patient, uh, gets admitted. Uh, you know that uh, that is stored in HL7 using the code A01. So there are different codes to represent different activities in HL7, especially in the ADT ADT feeds. Uh, so um, let's say John has to transfer uh, from non-ICU to ICU location uh, for some emergency reasons and that is uh, stored using code A02 and Do John discharges so that is stored using code A03 and let's say John uh, comes as an outpatient to the hospital and doctor advised uh, no you have to stay in the hospital for one or two days and that visit is converted from outpatient to inpatient right so that is there's a different code for that again a06 is the uh, code for converting outpatient to inpatient and for outpatient uh, code is a04 and the pre admit uh, registration code is a05 so if john has to update his address in the hospital records and that code is a08 if the hospital has to cancel the admission and that is a11 and if uh, transfer has to be cancelled that is a12 and if discharge has to be cancelled it is that is a13 and there could be some cases where uh, you know let's say john makes this hospital registration unknowingly twice right so it's the same patient uh, uh, making the registration twice unknowingly so the hospital has to merge uh, these records and the code is different again for that so the merge codes a18 a36 so likewise uh, the different codes for each uh, you know event as I can't expose you my client HL7 data so I just googled uh, some ADT sample message and this is uh, one of the uh, sample message and just one looking at this message ca can anyone understand looking at this message it's just full of pipelines what is this right so we need some tools to e read this um, different lines and understand and this is uh, one of the 
HL7 message uh, viewer tool. Um, I like this tool. This is a smart HL7 viewer and this is easy to use tool. So and it, it's easy and you just uh, clear and copy your message from somewhere and then paste it here. You just have to clear and paste the copied message. Now you can read you know the different lines and it's more organized and the first line is uh, MSH. So MSH is uh, one segment and this segment uh, will have the different fields and the components right this MSH is, is what is this for and this is this indicates uh, this message type is ADT and you can see what different fields here and what different components uh, in the right panel uh, the message type is ADT and the event type is A01 right and the next uh, line EVN this is another segment and this this represents uh, the event type is A01 A01 is the admit uh, event and the third uh, segment is PID which is nothing but the patient identification uh, details so all uh, patient related information like the patient name the SSN the patient address all all these values are stored in the segment and the next segment is uh, patient visit PV1 which is nothing but the patient visit segment and this has all uh, related fields like what is the patient class is it inpatient class or the outpatient class and the patient location and all all related fields and the values and the GT1 is uh, one of the segment uh, for uh, storing the guarantor information and the DG1 is uh, to store the diagnosis information. This ADT message uh, has to adhere to certain rules and few of the rules, uh, let's go through few of the rules. Um, this MSH segment uh, event type and the EVN segment event type uh, both has to match this if this is a01 and this has to be a01 right both has to convey the same thing if this uh, msh says uh, this is the admit admit event and the evn says this is the discharge event then that's contradicting so that's in that uh, becomes invalid message and the patient uh, identification like the pid segment uh, um, needs to have some uh, must values like uh, patient account number and uh, you know the patient ID which is MRN so that's a unique identification given to patient right uh, that is a must value and the PV1 uh, the patient uh, visit uh, needs to have this patient number uh, so this is also a required value and this GT1 and DG1 segments are the optional uh, segments um, we uh, this ADT uh, message may or may not have the segments uh, but must have uh, this MSH uh, segment I in fact all the uh, HL7 messages have to have this MSH uh, segment uh, this is the uh, required and this EVN is required for only ADT messages and the PID PV1 are the required messages uh, across all on a side note, uh, um, there is something called DPHI which is uh, electronic uh, protected health information uh, about the patient. So uh, people uh, whoever uh, like to use uh, the HL7 um, you know, uh, real patient data for as samples. Uh, so make sure that uh, EPHI is masked or at least removed um, before uh, you know publishing it or uh, um, sharing it with others. EPHI is something uh, like the PID information and the patient visit information. Um, so all this is the confidential information like who is the patient, what treatment that patient is taking and uh, who is the attending doctor. All this is the confidential information um, corresponding to that patient. So the EPHI has to be uh, you know masked before uh, you use the real data samples. 
as I said, uh, there are different feeds, right? ADT feeds, lab feeds, radiology feeds, pharmacy feeds. So there are different message types for each of these feeds. As you, if you have uh, noticed it, for ADT message uh, that was shown in uh, Smart Health Shell 7 viewer, the message type that you would see is ADT, right? So likewise, for the lab feeds, uh, for the lab messages the message type that you would see is ORM and for the radiology the message type is OR uh, no uh, I think for the lab messages right uh, the message type is uh, ORU and for the radiology messages the message type is ORM so likewise for the different feeds uh, there are different message types and now I'll quickly show you uh, how the lab message lab HL7 message looks like uh, on HL7 viewer uh, so I will uh, show you uh, example for the lab message uh, just paste it okay this is the lab message let's say a patient uh, has to go through some urine test or the blood test right so that, ha that also has to be stored in HL7 uh, uh, in some format uh, as uh, you know lab message and this is one of the sample lab message and this lab message also has uh, MSH, PID, PV1 that we saw in ADT message right as I said these are the common segments has to be there and the what extra segments that I see is ORC, OBR and OBX right uh, let's say some uh, someone has to go through some urine test so this ORC uh, the segment uh, uh, you know the contains the uh, values of order number and who is the ordering provider you see who is the ordering provider there's some doctor uh, suggested uh, to take this uh, test uh, right so who is the doctor name the prescribed doctor name and then so you see the feel good doctor and uh, this is uh, masked uh, data so um, so that's that's what this uh, uh, the order details are stored in the ORC and OBR this is one other segment uh, this segment will have um, you know um, the what specimen uh, like what sample is it a urine sample or the blood sample and the, uh, the received date so all these details details are stored in this segment and the OBX is the you know the result uh, uh, segment so this will have what is the result value and the result status like uh, is it the normal or abnormal whatever the reference value uh, so um, like this observation uh, uh, messages right the lab uh, test or the radiology test or the microbiology test and these segments like ORC, OBR, OBX, these three segments uh, will be common across the observation orders. The only thing differs is the, uh, the content and the values what stored uh, in these segments will differ. But these segments uh, will be common across the observation seg uh, messages. And this uh, MSH, PID, PV1, as I said, this is common across all the messages. Um, yeah that's all uh, about it and this was the you know I tried uh, um, giving my um, uh, giving tips out of my um, best knowledge and the experience I hope this helped you and thank you